what what's your what's your favorite um breakfast you guys have breakfast this morning mm, no i fucking hate breakfast <laughs> Hey, welcome to Creative Block. I'm your host, V. And I'm Sean, a.k.a. Lord Spew. We interview people in creative industries about their life, work, and hobbies while we doodle jam. We asked people on Twitter if they had specific topics they wanted us to discuss, as well as some drawing prompts. Today we have with us Car Frollo. Frollo? It, it's it's, it's Frollo. It's, it's like a, it just messes up your mouth. Car for Olo. <laughs> today, oh, yeah. today, today, today we have with us Car for Olo. Tell us. Hey, that's who... me. <laughs> you got it. Okay. T today we have with us Car for Olo and we're going to design some, uh, some, some characters that are yelling. Now you're, you're a, a voice actor and I've noticed going back in your voice resume that you've done on shows, uh, you tend to to lean a little bit towards I don't know if there's a typecasting thing and how you feel about this but you tend to play characters that yell a lot you have uh Grenda um you have uh Stuart from Oddballs you have Backwards Gary um how do you how do you feel about this role that you've kind of fell into oh. a little bit oh my god terrible now <laughs> oh. really? no it's good no i mean listen if you're good at something then people are going to want more of it yeah uh, is well, it not think, something I you've think, thought about no i i actually have because people are like you know i did have somebody reach out to me once like a an agent and they're like you know we'd love to give you the, all these things and and uh, you could try out for all these roles and, and this and that i'm like i don't think you understand what i actually do like i'm I, I i mean i typecast myself you know what oh, i mean no. and like I think the thing is like I don't even I don't even consider myself a voice actor. I think you get something like Eric, Eric Bowser who comes in who can just he's got crazy range and everything. Where me, I'm sort of specific for very <laughs> very specific types of characters, you know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them I've gotten on accident, you know, or um, or sort of fell into the role. Like um, you know, early on when I started, uh, I was on. Uh, I wasn't on Gravity Falls. I was on Fish Hooks, and I was sitting next to Nikki Yang, and she was um, the voice of Candy on uh, Gravity Falls. She's also uh, was it Bimo? Rainbow? Yeah, Bima. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, she's, she's, she's great. A, yeah, she's a really good friend of mine. But we, it's funny because <laughs> it's funny because like we tell everybody that we were each other's board partners, but we weren't. And there was uh -huh. no, there was no board partners in that. I just had this conversation with her. I ran into her the other day and we have this weird false memory that we were board partners together on fish hooks, but that show didn't have board partners, but we sat next to each other and we talked all day. So I think that's what it was. But what would happen is like, we'd be sitting there and I would just, I don't know, I like, I like messing with people. So it's like, if I feel close to somebody, I, I kind of mess with them, you know? <laughs> and uh, so I, I hope he like, messes with me. Yeah. <laughs> I will. I will. Especially, especially since you fucked my name up so much at the time. But like, oh. but like, so I'd be sitting in my cubicle and I just, I just out of nowhere, I'd go, hey, Nikki, like really loud. And she'd, she'd have her banter back with me to have this back and forth. And Alex cast us as these characters in the show. That's why we're best friends on the show. And I didn't That's even put so the, cool. well, I didn't, is it the, here's the, the dumb thing is I didn't even put the two together because Disney called me into audition. And Alex is like, yeah, just uh, just be yourself. And so I was like, so what is that like the sound like a little bit drunken Ray Romano? He's like, no, like <laughs> yell. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's easy. So then, and then I and then you know I went through this audition process. I ended up getting the the role, which was like probably the most fun thing I've ever done. Honestly, is playing Grenda, and. Uh, yeah, then we did like the DVD release and I heard Alex talking to the interviews like, oh yeah, no, Carl and Nikki had this shtick over the cube together. And I was like, oh my God, I guess I just had all the games together. But... That's so interesting. That's so cool oh. that like, that, you know, I think it really shows also like for 
a showrunner to pay attention to their crew, like how we can really uh, impact the show in a positive way, right? Like just like paying attention to like the fun dynamics. Because um, when you were recording, do you feel like you did have this like fun back and forth with Nikki when you guys were recording lines? Were you able to riff a little bit? Well, no, because for my voice in particular, it's so loud, they would put me in like an isolation booth. <laughs> So, Get him away from <laughs> everyone else. Yeah. We have to banish him. <laughs> Honestly, it's like, I think that's been my track record. I, there's a couple, Nikki actually had a pilot where she had me do a voice a call for a, uh, what was it, Yo-Yo Toki Happy Years? Um, I think it was on Amazon, but I remember that was like an ensemble where I came in, there was like six people recording at the same time. And that was like the one and only time, well, not the only, maybe like one out of two times where I actually got to work with an ensemble for voices. Oh, wow. um i think the other one was on centaur world oh yeah but um other than that in centaur world i wasn't screaming you know so it was like well i was screaming but <laughs> that day i wasn't well, oh my god well, you're right i only fucking scream well i just i just want to <laughs> let you know that i'm i'm a fan of your screaming as a fellow <laughs> yeah. sc as a fellow screamer as a typecasted screamer myself in in all my in all my first roles in anything I was asked to do, I was always like the orc or the monster or yeah. the yelling character. Um, and so I get it. I think and it's funny because both are, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I got cast that way because I was in a death metal band and people knew I could sustain yelling for a long record. I was going to say, I think that's funny because both of you guys, when I listen to you, you're like both very chill and knowing <laughs> that you're typecasted as screamers is like the funniest thing to me. Uh, well, it's, I'm chill! I, it's, <laughs> <laughs> Damn! I'm chill! I'm so <laughs> relaxed and chill! <laughs> There's a, it's funny to be able to make money off of stuff you used to get in trouble for. Yeah, yeah. that's so yeah. funny. Like my whole career, whether it's screaming or drawing cartoons, it's all stuff I used to get in trouble for in school growing up. Really? Oh, well, yeah. that's kind of, that's really fun because did you, so you used to get in trouble drawing cartoons during school, right? And so yeah. did you, but did you kind of like think in the back of your head, like, whatever, this is going to be my career? Or did you think like, yeah, gosh, like this is never going to, I can't never make anything from this and I just get in trouble from it. You know, what was your you know, outlook on that? I didn't really know. I remember there was like this period in high school where I, you know, I don't really know. There was this, there was this period in high school where um, I was torn between marine biology and cartooning. And I always thought, you know, oh, I don't know, I grew up in Connecticut and this was like right when the internet was sort of like just kicking off. So there wasn't that that many things for me to look up by animation or getting into it. Mm. And it was sort of like, you know, I didn't really have any guidance at all, but I knew that I just couldn't stop drawing or trying to make people laugh in class. And uh, I started going to this marine biology school in high school and they would come. I went to like normal high school half the day and the other half of the day, they'd pick me up and bring me to this uh it's called like aquaculture school in oh, connecticut cool. and you would like farm tilapia and oysters and it sounds really fun because like yeah. the basement had these tanks full of eels and uh but if you were like on the track to college like, if you got normal grades then you had to take like marine chemistry marine oh. biology but if you like were not so great at school you got to raise the fish <laughs> Like, I wanted to do that. <laughs> like, but it's like all the dumb kids had to go, like, make the clams, you know? <laughs> did, you, so, did, did you fail on purpose just so you could take care of the fish? Or were you no, just... but I, I noticed that no matter what class I was in, I was drawing the teacher in some kind of compromising position, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's sort of like, it just all sort of clicked one day when I was like, you know what, like, I kind of want to pursue this. This is when I, this is what I feel the best doing. Um, and so that it kind of just became the thing. I just all of a sudden, like, I think sophomore year on, I just really, really focused on, I've got to, I've got to get into animation. I have to move to California. Uh, that's where I have to be for animation. Like I knew those key things. I knew mm -hmm. California is where the studios are. Um, I can't do it here. 
and I've got to make my way out there and go to school in California and somehow get it. Getting paid to do things that you normally get in trouble for is amazing. And that's why I became a UFC cage fighter. Great. Wait, are you? No, I'm just, I... no, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, that... <laughs> I knew that like, I, I wanted to get paid for it. You know, I started punching kids at a very early age. Um, and my, <laughs> yeah. I was going to believe this for like, if you got kept the bit going, I would have believed it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just a lie. I'm sorry that I lied to you. I, I, I'm messing with you because I care about you guys. I, I, I sometimes wonder like how many professions out there are stuff that normally you'd be shunned from society if it wasn't your job. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Like a know. yeller. Like yeah, 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 just yelling really loud in a well, room. If you're, or... just, if you're just drawing in your notepad all day, making fun of people, then there's like a there's like a very fine line between like an a hole, yeah, and like a professional cartoonist. Yeah, you better be funny at it. That's the key. <laughs> don't know if that ever. I don't know if you guys ever experienced that, but I remember um, when I was in art school, I would try. I would have a sketchbook all the time, and I would try to sketch people because you know it's how you get better. Yada yada. And I was sketching this old man, and he saw me looking at him sketching him, and he caught a glance of my drawing and he got really mad at me because oh. this is just what you do it's just like how you spend your time making fun of people and I was just like it wasn't even a bad caricature it was just like fairly realistic um, nice. and yeah and, and then I was like so scared and uh, I always wonder how many people out there ever got in trouble for sketching people. have you ever thought about the other angle where maybe that's what the exact thing he yells at the mirror he pointed himself and he and he says is this what you do is this how you are is this what is this who you've become <laughs> like he just yells at a mirror and he he saw your drawing and he was like it was like you holding up a mirror to him it's 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 funny it's usually like um it's one of those things where it's like you dish it out you have to be able to take it not i'm sort of changing it i'm going in a different direction a little bit because obviously the guy that old man wasn't dishing anything out <laughs> but <laughs> We, I have noticed that when you're drawing people at work, um, you have to be careful, like, who's going to get offended, who's not. It's like, when there's a couple crews I was on where we would make, like, sort of like an agreement up top, like, hey, we're all going to draw each other. We're going to have, like, a wall of shame. We try oh. to draw each other, like, the worst way possible and put our pictures up. And, like, uh, if you want anything to do with it, say now. We won't draw you. You know, but, of course, the whole crew wanted to do it. So, yeah, that was... Uh, that was like the three shows I was on at Disney. We just were always drawing each other and putting ourselves on the wall of shame. It's like That's a Pollyanna so version of roasting. Yeah. It's like a roast it's, Pollyanna. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gone are the days now that we're on Zoom all the time. But Oh, yeah. 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 Do you feel like, um, you know what? I kind of want to ask you a little bit um, to give us a, a quick... Um, peek into your career because you've so you've done these shows in house you've been at different studios um and kind of what was your first animation gig oh yeah yeah so my first animation gig was um i was at cartoon network and it was a show called uh, the life and times of juniper lee and it was um i was a scanner like back then we were they hired you to scan the storyboards and and then you'd crop them in photoshop for animatics Wow. How did you get that job? How so you... <laughs> I was interning on a show called um, Megas XLR. Is that so, one for Adult Swim? No, it was on Cartoon Network. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, but so maybe that was my first gig. I don't know if internship counts, but I was interning um, and I was going to school nearby and uh, I wasn't getting as much out of school as I needed. Mm -hmm. And I was in my second year. What school? I had actually real fast. What was it? What school? Oh, I was at um, Woodbury University. Ooh, I've never heard of that one. I know, and that's the thing. It's actually it's in Burbank, and Ooh. it has an animation major. But it, you know, nobody knows about it. And it really, you know, and I don't want to bash the school, but let's just say it's a, uh, it doesn't it didn't provide what I needed at the time. Um, so I had gone to two years in Connecticut to art school transfer to this school and I'm thinking like okay I'm I'm two miles from the studios yeah. this 
is gonna this school is gonna know what to really do to to get me out of my career and it was um we had some really awesome teachers but then the facilities weren't really set up for animation so you go to these great lectures and classes and then you had no workspace and um, I remember I had to make my dorm into like a, a lab basically with like a light box and everything. And really, wow. Yeah. And there was really no one to check your work until you saw them again next week. And, and uh, so it was, it was a little harder, you know, I think um, a lot of awesome people have come out of that school, but I think, I think they've had to really push themselves and, and uh, I don't know. Maybe don't put this part in about me shitting out of school. I do think it's interesting to hear kind of what you uh, got out of school because I do feel like uh, everybody's got like a different experience going to school. And so like sometimes people are like, yeah, school was great for the community or like for you. I think it sounds like going to Woodbury was great because you were close to the studio. So it gave you that opportunity to be like, well, I can apply because I'm already here. So it's not as big of like a, leap of faith like if you were applying from the east coast right yeah let me let me make a cleaner version of it, it doesn't show in the school <laughs> so, <laughs> i i uh so i was i i went to um i went to the Connecticut institute of art for a couple of years mm -hmm. and it was solely to say like i needed to brush up on you know fine art life drawing things like that to be able to get into an animation school right and then when i got into woodbury you know, I thought, you know, we were right down the street from the studios and it was going to just be like really all hands on, really intense uh, training. And it just, it wasn't a lot of that. So um, when I got an internship at Cartoon Network, I remember I actually had some of the faculty pull me aside and um, well, I it, it was right after the internship, I was offered a, a job mm. and they basically were like, listen, just get out of here. <laughs> Like you need to go. Like that's great, because like I yeah, feel it was like... very, it's very encouraging. Like I, like I said, yeah. the teacher, the teachers were amazing. Mm. This is back in two thousand two. I don't mm -hmm. know what the school's like now, but the system was not set up. It was, it's a, it's a very good school for architecture, but it was not, you know, a contender for animation as far as the facilities go. You know, because you can only learn so much without trying. You hear any lecture you want, but if it's trial and error is what really gets you there. And like I learned everything from the studios honestly. So basically uh, I got this job scanning and I was like, well, I could learn more being in Cartoon Network than mm. going back to classes. So I left school to be a scanner, which was kind of scary because, you know, it's, it wasn't based on my talent or anything yeah. like that, that I got the job. It was just, let's give them a chance. And, you know, so I started scanning and then um, I was working with an Animac director who turned out to be a good friend of mine, but he started to let me edit like an act out of the episode just to, to practice. And once I got into editing, I was like, you know what? I really like the flow of the story and storytelling. And the director of the show started to let me do um, some storyboard revisions, like mm -hmm. try my luck there. So once I kind of, I, I pretty much lived at this studio because it was like, oh, you're living your dream and you're there all day. And, right. you know, and <laughs> I didn't have, I didn't have a dorm to go back to anymore. So, um, yeah, so I just sort of like went full. I, I treated it like this is my school. You know, my I didn't have a great school experience, but this is I'm learning everything here because you can just walk down the hall, talk about character design to someone, or talk about storyboards to somebody else, and you sort of find where you fit in. Um, and then with everything I learned on that show, I started to apply for revisionist gigs to buy testing, and I, I get them, and I kind of moved on from there. Yeah, that that's that's really that's really cool to see that like you could just you you did go in and did this job that you were like, oh, I don't know if this is uh gonna like lend anything else, but being at the studio, you made all these connections and that's kind of how you got like your opportunity to test and finally like land a job. Um that's Yeah, really exactly. Mm -hmm. It's gonna see how many different ways there is in because i mean you 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 interned you scanned you found ways to take tests and and to build relationships and you started from uh a place that i i think that some people have reservations starting from like some artists are like oh like i'm out of school i'm right out of school like immediately i'm going for those board jobs but you started at these places that uh it it, it gave you this in and you got to see the studio process and and do it 
it's kind of yeah, tough, no, though because it's like there's no more scanning now <laughs> yeah i know but there's also there's i mean there's there's pa jobs there's other there's other stuff there's board revision jobs but i think the the one like the one benefit that i had was i was like working on it was technically like a production job you know mm -hmm. and for me i still needed to work on my boarding skills stuff like that and i was able to see like what didn't work coming in that we were changing all the time and a lot of them a lot of that stuff was from people straight out of school who were hired on as just board artists so it was i feel like i was able to like practice more and get in and get ready so I, I wasn't like launched into a board job and then kind of flounder for a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was able to like really prepare. And so, you know, everyone's got their different paths. And, you know, I've definitely met people who are like, well, I'm not going to leave school unless I'm a director or a board artist or this and that. But, mm. you know, good for them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like every school has like a different type of like way of finding that first gig. So it's kind of like interesting to hear that for you, you were just like, okay, I'm going to like, I'm, I'm going to go out of my way to find like a, a, a job and like start my career ASAP, which, um, I think is, it's really smart. <laughs> I think if, uh, anyone can like get a job like during school, it's like also pretty lucky. Um, but I was also yeah. going to ask you after like, so kind of like, how long did you stay at Cartoon Network and how did you make the jump over to Disney? Like kind of, how was that? Um... Um, so I was at Cartoon Network for, I would say three and a half years. And I went from, uh, I went to Camp Laszlo and uh, my gym partner's a monkey. Mm -hmm. I guess all, all the monkey shows they had. And, um, <laughs> and then uh, I was uh, boarding on uh, my gym partner's a monkey. And then I, you know, the, the show ends as they all do and um there was not i think at the time yeah cartoon Network was going through that whole oh we're gonna we're gonna make live action cartoons now which you know it doesn't oh, make sense right yeah but there was really nothing to go on to and then um or there was only like a couple shows and so i jumped over to disney and it was it you know it was a little tough because you have to sort of ride that wave in the industry where sometimes it's up sometimes it's a little down because i i was storyboarding and writing at Cartoon Network. And then Disney had a revisionist position. And I was, and I was like, well, I want to stay up where I'm at. But I took the revision spot. Mm -hmm. And then knowing that I could move up within that company. And luckily I was able to move up within like three months. You know, they oh, had a, wow. Because mm -hmm. I think when a studio knows, oh, you've been boarding already, you're taking a revision spot, you want to keep moving up. If they know this ahead of time, when someone leaves a show, you're probably going to be the first person they look to to see if you want to move into that slot or if you're ready. Do you... Little, um, when you say like studios know you want to move up, um, do you, is that something that you tell production that you talk about with the showrunner or? Like, yeah. Yeah. Cause I, you know? yeah. Cause I was reluctant to take the job because I, mm. I let them know like, well, I'm boarding and writing right now. I'd like to keep on that trajectory. Um, and like, Oh no, it's good to know. And, you know, we, we know that you can do that. And, um, you know, if something comes up, then we'll see what we can do. Mm. So so yeah, I don't know. I jumped and then went there. And uh it was it was cool because when I was at Disney, um I was able to freelance a couple of chowder boards at the time. So I was still able to like write and storyboard the way I wanted to and keep that going. And then and and then I was able to move up at Disney and start storyboarding and writing there. So so it didn't take long. But you know, at the time when you're really young and you're eager and you're scared to make these decisions, it sort of feels like three months could be like an eternity. Like, oh, what did I do? Yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. Because how old yeah. were you at the time when you like made that jump? Oh my God, I don't know. Was I 23? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. No, yeah, 20... 24. I don't know. I was in my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> were all the shows you worked on uh, board driven? No, not all of them. Um, but a lot of them were, I would say it's about half and half. Okay. And then sometimes there's a show that's script driven but open to changes, and it depends who's who's running the show, really. Yeah. How big of an adjustment was um, writing and storyboarding at the same t time for you? Had you written much before that? Um, no, but it was one of the, it's just sort of like once you get into storytelling, it comes a little more natural. Like if you have a, a way that you like to tell jokes in a way that you want uh, things can play out in your head. Um, you just have to, that's one of the, that's one of the things where you just have to take like a, like a leap of faith a little bit in the beginning. You can't really train someone that well, like to write 
and storyboard. You know, you could train storyboarding really well, but like comedic timing, there's some element of that just being a uh, a natural um, yeah uh, things for some people. And I don't. I hate when people say, "Oh, well, well, they get it, they get it," you know, because yeah. I feel like that's like a lazy way of saying I didn't have to train them. And I, and there is, I mean, there is some level of training for writing and story. I mean, there's a learning curve. There's all that, but at the same time, I think some people are more comfortable uh, just storyboarding off a script where other people are more comfortable with the freedom of changing the story to fit where they want something to go. Cause they might think of like, uh, Oh, we've got to pay off this act three in a really specific way. Oh, if I see this in act one, that's going to work better where that might not be in the script you get, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. if you're a natural storyteller, I think outline shows, um, are a really good fit. Um, so yeah. I agree. I feel like I, I really agree with like everything you say. Cause I do agree with you when you were like, um, oh, it's, it's, it's kind of lazy when people are like, oh, it's like they get it or they don't. Um, but, and I used to be like, we could teach anything to anyone. And then I started realizing like, oh no, okay. It is true. Some people have like a specific kind of like style yeah. or like vibe like for example I it took me a while to realize but I think my sense of humor is a little bit more like Nickelodeon than Cartoon Network in a sense because it's like more like loud and crazy and slapsticky and every time I tried to test for Cartoon Network shows that are a little bit more like subtle I would not get the test and now I'm like oh yeah I it's like a, a fits kind of thing you know so yeah, there yeah. is you a can thing see it later <laughs> right yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's tough because it's just sort of knowing everybody's uh, strengths and weaknesses sort of, because mm -hmm. I don't want to say you can't train someone to do outline because that's too much of a blanket statement. Because, you know, on, right. when we were on oddballs, we, it was script driven, but it was very open to changes if somebody had a better idea, this and that. And we also were working with some, I think a lot of the people on the show, we were able to give uh, first time leadership roles to. Oh, awesome. So, yeah, so some of the directors really never had um, any say on a show pr previously to changing story or, or trying something out. So, and that was like a case-by-case -case basis, you know, it wasn't just like a blanket statement for the whole show. So certain days I'd sit with certain people more and kind of walk them through it. Um, some people caught on quicker, you know, some people, uh, you have to explain that the script worked better, you know? Mm. So right. it's, but, but you want to give them the opportunity to have that option so you can sort of like w walk them through it. But um, yeah, and it's, a case, it. it's a case by case, but yeah, for the most part, you know, it's, I think we're both in agreement that there is some level of just comedic timing is a, a bit of a natural, uh, God, I can't think of the word. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like a feeling, like, you know, like kind of getting that instinct. Um, instinct. Yes. Yeah. Instinct, sensibility, yeah. proclivity. Yeah. I can't wait until the editor has me trailing off and then instinct really loud instinct. To, to put my, put my uh, sentence together. The editor's going to cut out all that space and make you look like so smart. Like, like all words are instant for you and instant yeah. grasp. Yeah. I don't think there's an editor, is there? Um, we made up Clements is not real. Clements is not real. <laughs> um, I, I was going to ask you, though, I think what you touched on is really interesting. You're uh, talking about how sometimes you also have to talk about how the script was stronger. And for you as a leader, having these uh, conversations that can be kind of difficult, how do you, what is your philosophy approaching kind of like a conversation that can be a little difficult uh, with uh, people, you know, when you have to give notes or when you have to be like, um, roll it back to the previous version. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Well, I think if you're gonna, if you're gonna run a show and leave the scripts open to interpretation, I think you just have to be willing to have those conversations because they're going to happen, you know, yeah. but it's better to have some freedom where people can play with stuff and then have to have one of those talks every now and again, than to make sure everyone's locked in you know, like, mm. like the script is God and can't, can't depart from it, you know? Um, mm. And shows are different though. There's also shows I was on where scripts were locked in and where you can stray is like the visual humor and really push the visual stuff and sell things um, with the, the physical acting and things like that. But um, yeah, no, those, those conversations are, 
I don't, they're not so bad, but they're, they're not like the, they're not the yeah. best part of the job. <laughs> but like I said, like, I mean, if you have to have one of those conversations every couple of months, but most of the crew is really able to push their skills and, and feel like they're bringing something to the table and the, the shows are coming out so much better because they have those, you know, extra flavors in it for, from everybody, then it's, I mean, it's worth it. How would you say is your, like, what's your, I guess I'm kind of like trying to uh, ask what your kind of like leadership style is. Like, how would you describe, like, are you kind of like, uh, do you go into a meeting like with an idea how you're going to like lead it? Are you kind of like more like go with the flow? Kind of how do you prep for these, um, you know, like conversations? Uh, well, I mean, I think... I've always got a direction or a style that we're pushing the show in. Mm -hmm. um, and hmm, how do I explain that? <laughs> Cause I'm not, I'm not, you know, I think one of the things is like when you're, if you're trying to be a good leader or run a show, one of the things I had to learn was that if I have a very specific, like this, I have a, like a joke in my head or a gag in my head mm -hmm. and I'm like, Oh, it's gotta go this way. It's gotta go this way. And I, I walk someone through it or talk someone through it. And they go off and they do their own version of the gag, but it still works and it's still funny. Then mm. that's a win, you know. Like you got to let it go um, because you don't want to hawk over people and have them feel like they're restrained, you know. Um, right. But I, when you have to look at what's the most important thing, the most important thing was that we have a a joke that's hitting when the joke was supposed to hit, and it's working. So um, letting go a little bit uh, has been important, but at the same time, I do. Uh, you know, really want to like sit with people and, and bring them through the process and, you know, how we're telling the stories, how we're selling our jokes, how we're doing this. And, um, you know, and if I take a risk on, we took some risks on the last show with, you know, just letting people have these positions for the first time, but at the same time, you know, there's going to be a, a learning curve and you have to sit with people more early on. And that's totally okay. You know, because I think, especially on oddballs, it went from like really intense lots of meetings, lots of getting people up to speed to all of a sudden it just kicks into gear. And then at some point the show's kind of on autopilot, you know? I love that you say that because I feel like this is something that's not talked about a ton. And I do agree on the first season, there's like a learning curve. And not only is it uh, because it's people's like first time doing the job, but it's also like everybody's learning the style of the show and like learning yeah. the like humor, uh, not just not just the way to draw the characters, but also the kind of like the way you'll like shoot the scenes and everything. Yeah. And I think it's like, how long would you say was that? So overall, uh, for production, how long was the production overall? And how long did it take for the show to uh, reach that autopilot, would you say? It doesn't have to be exact. <laughs> this is for Oddballs? Yeah, for we're talking about Oddballs now. Oddballs is like two and a half years. It was the whole pandemic, really. Like, um, we went down, we went on lockdown when um, I was helping to develop the show uh, before we had a green light. And they got a green light during the pandemic. And then you know, we just wrapped a couple months ago, so it was pretty much the whole time. But um, as far as the autopilot, I mean, it takes a while because it's a, it's a department by department sort of thing where, you know, you get writing, writing, then storyboards, then design. And it's sort of so there's not like one day where it's like, oh, the whole show is an autopilot until, you know, <laughs> most of those jobs are really far along. But um, But yeah, I mean, I think at one point. I would say the last year was more autopilot than not. Oh, nice. So, yeah, yeah I mean, everyone was like amazing, you know? We had like a really, really strong crew on that show, so. That's that also point, great. Yeah, I was like, I was like watching and I was like, oh man, I, you know, it's, it does feel like, it feels like, um, and I say this in a positive way, like a like it has the energy of an internet cartoon, but it's but it fits really well in the in like the procedural. And I, I was I don't know I was like oh this is really cool. Like I hadn't have that feeling of like something that's like as energetic and and fun and and surprising in a while. I don't know. I just wanted to say like it's it was really it was really cool. And how did you kind of uh, did you guys 
did you have that in mind that you wanted to do something that feels like a little like different or odd to <laughs> <Sorry>. uh, <laughs> no yeah, yeah that's a good point yeah that, I mean that's exactly what we were going for because um you know the main characters is from James Rallison's YouTube show uh or YouTube um channel odd ones out and I think that's the one benefit we had was like hey you got this character who he's always going on these rants and these tirades you know we were always saying it's almost like curb your enthusiasm for kids because he he basically you know it goes on some kind of a rant or freaks out and that's such a good way trouble. to pitch it yeah yeah and that's how the story and that's what we we came up with when we were developing it we're like yeah you know what this is curb your enthusiasm for kids that's how we'll we'll sell it and that's great. doing doing that and having the character as a pre-existing character mm. you're able to show them well he acts this way and it's successful and that's why i think if we came in with this show i think there could have been an opportunity to get a lot of notes like well he's kind of snarky he's kind of this he's kind of that and i'm like yeah he is but that's the youtube series and it's wildly popular so yeah so we thought of like yeah the formula is basically curb your enthusiasm for kids where james has an idea something gets stuck on can't let it go and where you think the story is going to go, it goes in a complete, usually a completely different direction because of his rant and how he can't let go of something. Um, and turns around to bite him in the ass and he's got to basically fix the problem somehow. Um, and, you know, James, the James Ralston, he wanted to like, you know, expand the world. And, um, you know, he, he had these ideas for, you know, like Max the alligator or the crocodile and this other, these other characters in the world was a, uh, a lot of the world was built before I came on it, you know, um, but, you know, we, we need to figure out like, what's the, what's the storytelling? What's the pacing? How do we make it feel like your YouTube series? Cause YouTube is like really edgy, you know? And like I was saying, there's a lot of opportunities when you're, when you're bringing something to TV, you know, there's a formula where people want to steer away from edgy a lot of times because, you know, it's just some of the stuff isn't, it's just the way it's sort of gone. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm mumbling at this point. <laughs> but... no, I think it's really interesting. And I really wanted to kind of like ask you a little bit, kind of what was the development process for Oddballs? Because um, so you were with like Atomic Cartoons. And so was it, um, were you kind of part of like the people that were kind of auditioning for helping bring the show together how did how did that how did you get involved with the show okay <laughs> hmm. let's remember okay so i was <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the time i had just gone to netflix and i was um i was head of story on we lost our human yeah which is a really cool interactive show that's uh it's not out yet but will be soon um i was working on that and then uh one of the executives was talking to me about oddballs and she had she was bringing it up casually the uh the prior couple months um and then once i was working with her there at netflix she basically started showing me the project and she's like you know i think you'd be a really good fit because I, I worked with her before at nickelodeon on a uh, pig oak banana cricket nice. so she knew she knew my work and she knew um just you know we just knew each other and uh she wanted to see what my take would be and and she wanted me to meet um the creators and so I did and then we all hit it off and they decided they wanted to work with me so I got attached to the project and then I used to leave um we lost our human at night and go over to Atomic uh because they ended up going to work with Atomic as well on Oddballs which is a, a another animation uh studio so it's made it Atomic to air on Netflix just to be clear to everybody. <laughs> and so I'd go to Atomic at night. So like we'd have these meetings from seven to 10 on certain days of the week where we're like, okay, let's let's break this show and what does it need and what kind of storytelling and uh, how are we going to write the first episode and uh, what's... And then once we started to unlock, like it's about the rant mm -hmm. and Curb Your Enthusiasm for Kids, it sort of all started to click and we started to write a bunch of different episodes. And, you know, then... Uh, on my spare time, I started to storyboard the first episode we wrote together, which was um, uh, the toast one, Raising Toasty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and so that was like, and, and that was fun because we're, we're establishing Max. Like we come in with yeah. a blank slate. J and James yeah. is like, I just, I really want his best friend to be a crocodile. Mm -hmm. And we were, I'm talking with James. We, James and I have like a similar sense of humor. 
And mm. you, you talk about screaming a lot. And we thought, <laughs> well, it's funny, Max is just through the roof a lot of the times. And, you know, that'd be really funny to play off of James as the main character who's, you know, always stuck in his, uh, in his rant where his best friend is kind of overreactive. You know, it's kind of like a fun dynamic to, to launch into the stories with. So you started going with that. And then as I started boarding it, we started to sort of figure out the character more and more. And then, you know, we pitched the storyboard, which was actually this part was like, it was, this was the, the, the scariest, weirdest pitch of my life. But, you know, cause I was at that point, we're home for the pandemic. Mm-hmm. We've all been sent home and Netflix is like, Oh, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to pitch the series. And if it goes well, you'll get a green light. I'm like, okay. Then we can like do the show. So it was all on zoom. So Netflix comes on Zoom. There's like 40 people or something. Maybe not that many, but there's a lot of people. And yeah. then they go, and then, I don't know, for storyboard pitching, you've really got to act it out. And like, I really get into my my pitches. And so I'm in my living room and they go, all right, guys, uh, let's go dark. And they all turn their cameras and microphones off. So and you can't then, see them laughing. Yes, you're here. You're Nothing. pitching in the void. <laughs> you, you don't know if you're bombing. And like, when you're a storyboard artist, all you hear is the not laughs like oh you don't hear the laughs like like when you're pitching a board yeah you don't hear the laughs the laughs just means yeah no this is normal this is going okay it's the not laughs that you hear <laughs> so like this whole time i'm screaming and acting all weird in my house and i'm by myself <laughs> and it's like <laughs> it might be the beginning of the end of the world we don't really know yet do you have a pet to like look at you at all uh no at this point we we didn't have my dog we got uh, a, set up your dog got, with like a little audience member like costume like okay i need you to laugh please yeah but every now and again yeah every now and again i'm going through the picture i get a glimpse of myself in the mirror and i'm like what the hell is happening to my life like <laughs> i'm in my house screaming because it's a like, long episode too Nothing's going exactly because it's like, a yeah, twenty-minute episode, right? This is what gets me in trouble. Yeah, no, well, yeah, we decided uh, fifteen was like just the right amount of time for our stories. Okay. So okay. they they, they kind of like, and that was the cool thing about Netflix. It was like, okay, you've got X amount of minutes. We're going to animate, uh, and you could like play between episodes. Like, oh, this one only came out to eleven minutes, but it feels really good. Let's leave it at eleven. That means a bigger story can go up to like eighteen or nineteen. Like you can like move minutes from one episode to the next uh based on you know just the fact that you had those that time to be animated so uh yeah it was nice but at the same you know we i think originally we were like is this a 22 minute episode and we were pitching and then i was like once i cut it down in animatic after the pitch i was like yeah these are we should really stay at 15 because it's really easy to just overdo it and then there's too much talking and too much air like there's there's something yeah. really good about having a time limit, you know. It it sounds like you had a a unique involvement at the beginning of this because I don't yeah. hear about a lot of uh, producers pitching on. I mean, first of all, I think that um, your partner was was very lucky to have a, a producer that that uh, has a background as both an artist and a voice actor. That's like a huge that's yes. like a rare thing <laughs> but like your it sounds like your involvement was a little bit different than just your standard like sort of like a, hey i'm a producer role well i mean i think with oddball specifically i was able to get on with the guys early and work with them you know as like a team and we mm-hmm. sort of came together and like figured out what what do we want to make and how do we want to present it where other shows i've there's been times where I've come into the role just as, um, well, the show's already up. It's the show has a green light that I'm hired on as a producer. So there wasn't really, I didn't develop it, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. So being able to develop it was, uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's much more. Yeah. I don't even want to say fun because there is the other side too, where like development, you always hear of development hell. <laughs> yeah. 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 Where, like development hell is the worst. Okay. Like that's not fun, but this show it went we were able to clip along pretty quick in development so it wasn't we didn't feel trapped or lost and it felt like we were really building on something and maybe it's because i was employed somewhere else and i wasn't just living in development but um right it's uh yeah this one was it was fun because i was able to just we were just able to get in there and just joke around and and i don't know we felt when it was clicking we just felt like yeah this is probably this is probably gonna go like it didn't it didn't feel like um 
the scary, like, uh, does this work? Does this not work? Like this actually felt like it worked. So do you, uh, how many of you guys were in the room together when you were, so there was you and James, were there also other people that were there um, brainstorming and like joking around and stuff? Yeah, there's me, James Rawlson, uh, Ethan Banville is the other um, co-creator with James. He's from a writing background. And then there was the executives from Atomic um, oh, cool. in the room with us. So we that's, were, a, that's not like a, a, a big little team, right? That's like, that's yeah. really nice. I mean, there's a few of us. Because it's almost like on. a writer's room. You guys are like kind of already like a writer's room pretty much. It is. I think that was one of the biggest challenges too, is that since for whatever reason, we freelanced all the scripts once we got picked up. Oh. And since we all knew the show so well and you're freelancing to individuals, it's very hard for people to sort of latch yes. on to what you're doing. Yeah. So a lot of the times we'd have to go back through and really work on the scripts together again, you know, and um it was an interesting process but i think the shows came out really really funny you know and it was like it's one of those things like oh it's a pandemic we're not gonna have a writer's room i think we tried we tried to have a, a summit like a writer's summit on zoom mm -hmm. that was really tough because it's just like 40 hours on zoom spitballing everyone's a stranger no one gets to know each other on zoom yeah like so that was tough so it, it's one of those uh did you guys do any like bonding exercises to bring? Yeah, like, like a like a like a trust fall. No, uh, <laughs> I, no, I, like, think... I don't know, like hypotheticals or whatever. I don't know. Like, I'm always interested in hearing like how productions, how you handle working, um, not in the same room because um, I don't know. I feel like there's tricks or tips or whatever. I don't know. Just ask. Just wondering. Yeah, it's a. Uh... That's a good, that's a good question. It's, um, no, I don't think, I think I might've said one once as a joke, you know, like, I'll oh, go around and say whatever, say, no, oh, tell us your favorite, whatever. Like, mm -hmm. I can't remember. Like, I, like, I still think even if you do that, <laughs> a writer's room on Zoom isn't ideal. So you like, yeah. what do you guys like for breakfast? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Then, <laughs> and then they're like, okay, you go first. And you're like, nothing. Okay. <laughs> and then we're like oh great the guy running the show cries this is really great <laughs> but you know who i am feeling like i am getting to know on zoom carverolo and yeah. uh and I, I do feel like it's working in this instance i will say i think you're the only person that said my name correctly in the past 10 years he <laughs> listen he's done it like 10 times so yeah i, I really have had some some practice here under pressure getting it wrong over and over again <laughs> being told that i'm saying it wrong having notes live revisions and having thousands of people listening to you stumble and <laughs> you know i I'd, I'd love it if we could take a a quick switch would you mind if we did a a, a quick uh design together um i'd love to design a a, a like your ideal yelling character that you can do you know that you would do a voice for if if you if you wouldn't mind uh taking a, a, a quick tangent are you guys down sure yeah let's can do I it okay let's start with let's brainstorm a name because i feel like that's probably important what kind of vibe are going for here name wise well, he's gonna be a yeller. What's what? Who do you think? Like, who's a a yeller? We're famous um, yellers. You have old yeller. Um, we could do young yeller. We could do what age of yeller? I think that's the thing about a yeller. You have to. You, you can't expect them to be a yeller. Okay, oh. so that's Shocking. a good direction to go in. Maybe like qu quiet, <laughs> uh, subtle. Subtle Brendan, I don't know. <laughs> what like are we? Subtle like, Brendan. Does it? Subtle does that, Brendan. Yeah, do that, please. Subtle <laughs> Brendan. It's okay. Like a stick is very uh, like like long and thin. Yes. Well, uh, my next question is: Are they yelling just because, or is there a reason why they're yelling in this instance? Do we want? Do we want to give them a situational? reason why subtle brendan might be yelling well i've got creative block we ah, did it. Well, we're working whoa. through it live we're <laughs> brought to you live from creative block a real process a, a real embarrassing process reveal <laughs> behind the curtain check out live as we don't know what to do live in front of you <laughs> 
by the way if anyone's like listening on spotify or itunes make sure you check out the youtube video because we're kind of like writing and drawing these little guys so it's pretty fun um but yeah a, a good reason to yell i would say is uh something is stuck in your pants I don't okay know. And let's expa- let's, let's expand on that. Yeah, do you, do you, Carl, do you have an idea for something that could be in someone's pants that would call, cause them to yell? Like a full bear? Like a, a full bear. is it is it is it like a a shuriken? Is is there well, a, is there a sword through their leg? Is there? I would I would say parasitic worms. Parasitic. Ah! Put that out there. Parasitic yeah. worms. <laughs> Reason for say yell. That... <laughs> so, this is gonna be disgusting. <laughs> so 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 i think that uh first of all putting f- finding a character that would be in a situation like this are they you know maybe they're are they a little explorer do, do they have a little explorer hat you know we're, we're just brainstorming I, I think they just some like, ideas here i think they just lick their dog in the mouth <laughs> I love okay. that. I love uh, that because it's so real. And it's like, oh, Everyone no. has worms. Everyone ah, has worms. No. Licking dog. That's why I don't you know, have a dog. You know, parasitic worms are my biggest fear. Like, no joke. And that's actually why I made one of the main characters in Bug Salad a worm. Really? That's yeah, so interesting. I, oh, my gosh. I hate, I, I hate worms. I don't know why. So I was like, well, maybe it could be funny to embrace what you love and make the the worm a really neurotic character but you know that's so okay that's so crazy because i relate so much to what you're saying like the web comic i'm drawing right now the main character is karen and i was trying to write her and draw her in a way that was the most annoying for me and yeah. there's something really interesting about taking a character you really don't like and trying to make them alive and yeah. I don't know how to describe this feeling, but it's kind of like I'm going to give that person some love. I don't know, in a way to just kind of open up your chakras or something. I don't know, but it's (laughs) really interesting you mentioned that, I think. It's a a spiritual thing. It's like face your fears and make it something likable and all that. But yeah. It's really interesting you mentioned that because I, when I saw your short bug salad, I thought you loved worms. So... (laughs) No, because like the the character, I mean, like I never explained this, but like for me, it just helped write the character. So I'm like, well, if he's like a parasite, then he can't do anything on his own. So he's going to like, you know, he's going to wrap himself around the neck of somebody else and live through them, you know, and have them doing all the heavy lifting for him. But then it was like, well, wouldn't it be funny if he's actually the one who can handle life? He just doesn't think he can. So he's kind of calling all the shots, but he's like stuck on the character's neck as a tie and the tie equals responsibility and blah 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 and i don't know i just it's, it's kind of all came apart just from hating worms <laughs> that's not that's so that's so interesting because you're kind of like describing your writing process on that and where you just kind of like uh were you going to write the short no matter what or were you just kind of like oh nickelodeon's looking for shorts let, let me just kind of brainstorm a couple like random ideas or yeah yeah so i had i had this idea about i wanted to pitch an idea i wanted to pitch a show um and uh, by the way, I'm sorry for going on a tangent from the screaming butt worms, but no, it's okay. Uh, no, but we're like there. we're drawing all the worms right now. Oh wait, <laughs> so. where is it? What what page? It's I'm, on page three, three up at the top. Yeah. How do you get there? Oh, there we go. Uh, oh so, my goodness! So I'm trying. <laughs> I'm tr- we're trying out some things, and we can always pivot and change oh. some of this design wise. You know what I mean? Are those like in the person's legs? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, so anyone's like, like listening to this. Um, so so th- this character um, has the leg worms, but refuses to stop kissing their dog on the mouth. I think. Oh I think God. that's the the sort of the the character angle. They they know leg why worms. they know why they have the worms, but they will not stop. Shit! I think I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. But anyways, with the you're the one who has done the, this. You brought this on yourself. Sit now, oh, yeah, sit in it. <laughs> no, yeah. no, sit in, in, in the wreckage I'm, that you wrought. I'm going to go back to page two. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how did you, where were you like brainstorming these shorts and like, how were you, you, so you wanted to pitch a show and yeah. um, um, were you like aware of Nickelodeon looking for shorts or were you just, yeah, going to pitch this um, bug salad, no, no matter whether Nickelodeon was doing shorts or not? Well, at first it was just, I'm going to pitch it no matter what. And I was, I, I think I probably thought about it for about a year, you know, cause I, I had these, I wanted like a character dynamic, right? I first thought of the three characters and then kind of broke it down from there. Um, then, you know, at first I wanted, I, I actually thought of the three personality types where I was like, I want someone really naive, but I want like a friend who's overly cautious, but then I want like the bizarro friend who loves chaos because then it's going to create a tug of war with the main character in the middle of like being stuck between overly cautious and chaotic friend and and then i started thinking like about the worm stuff because i hate worms and i was like <laughs> oh even more if the overly cautious one is like stuck on him like a parasite and he's like a he's like a tie because it's like trying to show winston what it's like to live in the real world but his uh um unregulated friend you know is always way more fun and brings chaos in and then it's you know winston can't help but be torn between the two so i started thinking of that and then you know the worm lent itself to the rest being bugs and uh i just started i just kind of like kept working on that for about a year and then um i was going to pitch it as a pilot but then i then the shorts program popped up mm. and i know they, they did like a presentation and i was like you know i think that the shorts program could get me into development like as yeah. a pilot mm -hmm. and if i you know, I because I've had a pilot before, and I was like, you could waste a couple of years and do a bunch of work that nobody sees. But if they did a short to see how it works out, then you can show somebody. So I pitched oh, the short. Oh, can you explain that a little bit, maybe for the audience? Because it, you know, I feel like, uh, every, like, and even myself, like, I would think, oh, well, I made a pilot, I can show it to people, but it's not always the case, right? Well, I mean, I think, first of all, I mean, not that. I don't know anybody cracks down on this, but I don't think it's like actually legal. But at the same time, uh, they don't animate it usually. Usually like for a pilot, they'll do like an anime. At the time, uh, at Nickelodeon, they did like animatics, you know? And then they showed your animatics to a bunch of kids. Mm -hmm. If it didn't go, then they didn't like it. Then the project was sort of over. And all you have is like an animatic to show. But, okay. Yeah. 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 I wanted to like actually make something. So, right. So I, I remember... They were like, yeah, just bring it in, bring in the idea, come with like a piece of paper, show us some of the characters. And I remember like, I just, I think since I worked on it so long, I was like, you know, I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to make it. I'm just going to make this, I'm just going to board the whole short. So I did, which is like, maybe not advisable because <laughs> if you don't edit yourself, it could really, yeah, it could really go on way too much. So I remember I did the short and I went through and edited it as if, you know, it was an episode I was working on. So I, I boarded the whole thing uh, and I pitched it to Nickelodeon and they did it. And, you know, it was great because I already had half of the work done, you know? So. Oh, that's we were interesting. So you, yeah. when you pitched for the short, you already had the full boards done. Yeah. You pitched it. Okay. Yeah. And so, and so from an executive's perspective, it's like, oh, this is like a good bet for us because we can see so much and we understand it, right? Well, it could go both ways, actually. Like if you, if they like it, yeah. If they don't think that they can bring any sort of hmm. input in it and they think it's in the wrong direction, then they're going to sort of be like, well, he's, he's too in love with his own idea and there's there's no room for me type of thing. So it's 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 kind of a gamble, but for me, I knew for me explaining these characters, the only way I could explain them the best was show a storyboard. And I think for a short, you have a better chance of that working out because you're only showing them a couple of three minutes worth of stuff. You're not you're not pitching them like an eleven minute episode. So I thought, right. yeah, I'll, I'll take that risk, you know. So I did it. It, it worked out, which was great. Um, we got to make the short. Uh, and then Nickelodeon really wanted to develop it. So we made a, like a, a pilot, you know, where we tested it and, you know, put it out to the, the kids for their, <laughs> their review. And, uh, they didn't end up picking up the show. And then that was, you know, it's always tough to deal with because you think you're on this like trajectory and then it gets sort of stops. But 
Uh, they didn't pick it up. And then um, luckily, uh, Russell Hicks really liked the project. You know, I think I think in the pilot, we steered a little bit away from the spirit of the short, the original short. And I think that uh, hurt it quite a bit. So he basically gave me a deal. He's like, well, let's make five more shorts. So, and he's like, you'll, you can be like our Nickelodeon's first quote unquote digital series, you know, oh, mini series of shorts. So we got to make six of them all together. Um, and that was great because I got to basically tell the stories. I had all these stories in the back burner um, that I wanted to tell and I was able to, to get those done. And then, you know, during the time when we were making the shorts, and this is where like politics can always come into play with your own projects, but uh, all the executives in development um, left the company. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So, and that's always a problem because nobody wants to come in and adopt somebody else's project and be like, well, yeah. they want to spearhead it and show like, well, I brought this to Nickelodeon and I did this. So I was just sort of floating there mm -hmm. for a while and I finished these shorts and what was announced in variety and stuff is like the first digital series coming to Nickelodeon, like just, it just didn't happen. And oh, no. so I, yeah, so I had these six shorts and almost two years went by and yeah, that was like tough because I had stuff and I'm like, I want to show people stuff. I can't, yeah. I can't legally put it out there online, you know? Yeah. 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 And it's yeah, in the end, you know, a little bit. Yeah. And it's one of those tough situations because you're really grateful that you got to do it. But right. at the same time, can't people please see this? Like, it, we all agreed to do this. Like, like, what do we do? You know? Yeah. And I think the other, the other, the other thing too, is that Bug Salad was really like in the spirit of nineties, Nick, yes. where, right. yeah. So when I came to Nickelodeon, I, I started directing on Sanjay and Craig and we were being told like, you know, it's like, Oh, we're going back to nineties, Nick, mm -hmm. we're doing this type of stuff. You know, Sanjay and Craig pick open and cricket felt pretty much like nineties, Nick shows and nineties, uh, Nick shows. There we go. And, um, then they started to steer away from that, you know? They're like, the 90s had farts, but kids don't like farts now. Like, I... I yeah. That's a lie, dude. That's a lie, dude. That's propaganda. Yeah. I know. I did I did a whole... I did they a like whole, farts again now. I know. I know. I have a daughter. <laughs> it's like... But I shouldn't say anything. She's gonna... Her and her friends might listen to this. But uh, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's like... I did a whole episode on Sanjay Craig called Fart Baby, where Sanjay gets pregnant with a fart by holding it in too long. Mm. And yeah, so like that's where we were going with this stuff. So so for Bug Salad, you know, it, like 90s Nick was like, it, like it just had that like, uh, and there really are, there's not really any farts on Bug Salad, I don't think, but it has that like uh, the energy and spirit of a 90s show. Yeah. So by the time these other execs were gone and new ones coming in, Nickelodeon wasn't really steering in the 90s uh, Nick anymore. Instead, um, they're finding success with Loud House and shows like that. So they sort of had like a new path. And I remember um, I was leaving Nickelodeon and I just said, hey, like it would mean a lot to me if I could do something with these shorts, you know? Like I've, I've been sort of waiting two years. Um, and they're like, okay, well, we'll put them on YouTube. So like they put them on YouTube a week later, literally. And um, Oh, really? Wow. And who did you reach out to for that? Was it a development exec or like the VP or like who's the point of yeah. connection in terms of like position that you reached out it to? Was a, it was just a couple of executives there. Okay. Um, because like I said, people were kind of, people who were on the project were gone. So I, I went to like a, a couple of people who were just like, we're kind of in charge of a little bit of everything, you know? Um, mm, right, right, right. So yeah, they put them on YouTube, which is cool. Like, um, so the world got to see them. Um, so I'm happy about that. I just wanted people to see them, to be honest. Yeah. Wow. And do you feel like, okay, because something that I'm like really interested in too, is that it's not only just a pilot, uh, a short, and then the pilot that you made, it's a full little series. And do you feel yeah. like having it released gave you like more credibility in terms of like moving up being like a supervising producer an ep and all that yeah i will i will say that there's been a couple of jobs i've gotten because of my shorts which was pretty cool i mean i don't know if i got them completely because of the shorts but i do know like for example oddballs when i went to go meet um james and the other creator ethan they were shown 
bug salad ahead of time nice. uh, by one of the executives. And like, oh yeah, you know, I remember James was talking to me and he's like, yeah, I really, I like the style of humor and I, I like the pacing, you know? And nice. so we all just kind of hit it off. So, and there's been some other stuff too, where there's just something nice where you can just send them something, you know, yeah. especially when you're, this is the one thing I'm still running into, which is tricky. Cause like, if you're running a show mm-hmm. um, and someone's like, Hey, show me your reel. Like oh, yeah, dude. that's tough because you might be like, well, on this episode, I wrote it or on this episode, I storyboarded some of it or on this episode, I just oversaw the whole process and noted the whole thing. You know, like you can't really, because you that know, happened to me recently, an episode. Yeah. Where, it, where it was like, I was kind of like interviewing for this pilot, uh, and they were like, well, maybe um, that's something that could be fun for you to direct, And but then they were like, oh, can you show us a thing that you made, and I was, that you directed, and I directed episodes, but when you, when you're an episode director, like, none of your work is in the thing. Yeah, and it's it's, it, it's yeah. hard. It's like it's yeah. a weird thing because you don't want to show someone else's work, but then be yeah. like, "Well, I I had to thumbnail this for them because they're having a hard time." So this, you know, this is representative of me. Like, no, like you don't want to do weird. the stolen valor thing, false claiming. Right. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I have I over I overthink that stuff to death. Yeah, where it's like, like I even had a thing where it was like they wanted to show something that I did, and I felt. Like I couldn't because I roughed the whole thing out and somebody else cleaned it up, you know? And I was like, oh, that's somebody else's drawings. That's like, there you go, but that's your staging. I'm like, does yeah. that count? Like, yeah. but I don't, for me, it's like, I just want to dive in, make something really funny and work on everything, something as a whole. But it's hard to pull out what, like, what are you specifically going to take credit for on a show? To Like if someone says, show me an example of what you've done. You know, if you're not just writing and you're not just storyboarding, that's tough. And do you feel like having the bug salad kind of helped you out with that anxiety? Because because bug salad is yours. So even if like the even if you didn't storyboard everything and draw every single frame, like you still were like yeah, that one totally helped. That's a, that nice. that definitely helped. You know yeah. But um, bug salad is its own it's its own thing. It's its own type of humor. Um, so if I'm trying to show multiple things, like, oh, you know, even though I'm always typecast, every show I work on isn't about screaming. <laughs> like, <laughs> you want to be able to show other stuff. But I think the other, the other thing that's tough, too, is when someone says, hey, oh, show us the stuff you've been working on. Like, And I'm like, well, it hasn't aired yet, and I I can't. And, and, and they're like, oh, no, you know you can. I'm like, no, I know I can't because you're the executive that wouldn't let me share that other show I was working on with you before it aired, you know, it's like, so yeah, this is a test. Like, okay, you did really well on the pitch, but you're fired. <laughs> yeah. You're fired. Yeah, or we're suing so, you. So it's, it's hard. I mean, there's always that like that unspoken rule where you can still show your storyboards and things of shows that haven't aired yet. Cause they help you get a job. But like, if you're, you know, running a show, I don't think it's as easy to just slide someone a full episode. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Like don't show anybody. <laughs> Speaking of being typecasted, I've come up with a, a little. A, if you if you're willing to go to page three just for a second, um, I've, a I've come up page. with a scenario where uh, there he God. this uh, subtle Brandon is in biology class. He's brought his dog. He is the terrarium, and he's doing a presentation on the cool worms that his dog gave him, uh, and he's. Uh, he he maybe he's even proud of them. He's, he's he says I'm I'm a terrarium. He's a presentation on my worms. Uh, the prompt is parasitic worm. He's got parasitic worms from licking his dog's mouth, <laughs> and I would say um, you can pick any of these iterations. I, I've I've sort of included one where the the legs are worms. We have one where there's just kind of worms on the outside that V did, but. I'd like to just sort of brainstorm this character for you before we leave it behind and never look at it ever again, please. God, like, like first of all, there's that one has like nipples hanging over. Are those shorts? Uh huh. Yeah, I thought Sorry. so. No, I mean he's definitely not practicing clean hygiene or um, a traditional classic dress. He's not dressed for the, an occasion. 
He's not sure. that subtle. It, subtle mm -hmm. is only in his name. It's not really in his personality. I brought back a little bit of subtleness in in the far right over here iteration where he does have a little dress shirt. But yes. <laughs> have you gotten the no nipples note yet in a storyboard? I I, I I I did have this thing where um I uh when I was on regular show, um I made up a whole bunch of fake boards where all the characters had little asterisk buttholes, and and I asked JG to give me notes that it was like no more buttholes final warning in like red pen and then sign it jg and i i posted those and everyone thought i was going to lose my job because i was really putting <laughs> buttholes in all the characters so no not nipples but um but yes buttholes i've had something similar we've had well yeah i don't want to say <laughs> okay dude you've I'm had a run say, with I nipples think, on I the think... show <laughs> I've been on a show where I think a, a couple of buttholes might have snuck through. Oh. Or like a designer puts it on a dog or something, and you're like, oh, okay, what? <laughs> See the show, you're like, they're always trying to get stuff by butthole. you, dude. I that's know. true. Designers, they're sneaky. <laughs> but that's, that's the thing is, like, every step of the process, there's like a room for improvement or jokes, you know? Yeah. So, it's, what do you yeah. think? Really Throw in a butthole whenever you can. What do you think this character would sound like, Carl? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to do anything for very long. You could say just one word, but I, I'm curious about how, really about how you think about characters and how, if if you see a picture, how do you, do you always just do the same voice and everyone's like, yup, or do you, do you like say like, okay, they're a little bit of a nerd. Like what, you know, what do you think? How do you think about it? It honestly, it's weird because like <laughs> there's, there's most of the times I think sometimes it's been like, you know, Grenda doesn't count because Grenda was based on like me talking to Nikki. Yeah. You know, and I, I didn't work on Gravity's Falls outside of a voice because we were on Fish Hooks then. But like uh, other stuff, I think I've sort of gotten on accident. Like for, you know, uh, my fiance's uh, Megan Dong, she has Centaur World. Yes. And I would burp at home to bother her and i'd burp and go every time i burp i go oh ah like right after and she's like oh can you can you do that voice for jebri i'm like really sure you know so it's not like i showed up like oh look there's this plant he looks like this let's do that like she she wrote a character based on me trying to harass her with my burps to, to so, do the voice do you, did you always do burps and go into the voice or uh, that's a good, could that's you a good, do the uh, voice after? I could do. I mean, that one's just like that one. Yeah, I could do that one. But I, I will <laughs> say, there's been a couple times where I had to like warm up for Grenda, and I'd yeah. be driving to like a recording studio, and you're <laughs> you're in your car, and you're like you're like oh, yeah. like that, and like there's no even if your windows are up, people know what's happening. You know, and I didn't realize that until <laughs> this one guy got so mad at me once and I wasn't even yelling at him. I think he just looked over and just saw a guy sitting with his hands like 10 and 2 on the steering wheel normal, <laughs> just screaming. Something was just so upsetting to that guy <laughs> at that time. <laughs> but like, I have to do that for that one because it's so yeah. loud that it's like, I, I made the mistake once of like coming in without a warm up and. Oh, yeah. shit. It just and, like I just know that, yeah. Instead of like screaming like an idiot <laughs> behind the microphone, a bunch of nonsense for a while, like I guess scream in your car like a like an insane person. And what when you don't warm up enough, like like what's the? Are you do you feel that you just don't have the energy, or is it like your vocal cords are like what is it that you're like oh no it's like it's not working? Kinda like um. Yeah, they have to like hit a certain groove, I guess, like for a while. And then you can go right back into it like naturally. It's like when you're getting lines of dialogue, it's kind of a challenge to like show any kind of it. <laughs> like emotion with that when you're screaming at that level. So if you can like if oh. you warm up, then you can kind of like do right. the ups and downs a little bit easier than just coming out super hot, you know? Right. Um but yeah, I mean 
Yeah, again, I'm going to throw up. I'm looking at all these drawings. <laughs> Dude, I'm so sorry. I, I am trying to get us past this page. And it's and it's okay if you don't feel like doing the voice. I just, I, I, I wanted to at least talk about your process um, and design this character with you that you love. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to pitch a show based on this character, Carl. It's That's it. You have to stare at this veracity. Ver- How do you pronounce that? His worms. <laughs> For days I mean, that, and days. And that's the thing. Then there's like you, somebody drew like this pleasant face on the right side, just looking in, just watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the someone in the class, maybe. They're, they're like, yeah. oh, I, I can't wait for this presentation. I love worms. <laughs> yeah. 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 I also like the idea that maybe like they respond to him. Like, he's like, I'm a terrarium. And they're like, yeah, I'm a worm. Nice to meet you guys. Hello. God. <laughs> yeah, appalling. Appalling. Oh, it's an science experiment! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, that's so funny. Uh, well, <laughs> Carl. You don't have to do the voice. No, let's. Oh, we'll no, do, sorry. I'm just we'll looking. Go to looking. another page. I, I'm not trying to. I do. I do not want there to be any pressure. I was just seeing whatever came out. Came out looking at these drawings, and if what comes out is a trip to the bathroom and that you got a yak, like I get it. This is a gross design, a little bit, but you know. No, no, no. I could do this. I could do this. I'm sorry. I just. I'm. I'm. I know you can't see me, but I'm just like I'm staring at the page. Oh, dude, it's gross. I can discuss. It's like, oh god, it's so freaking disgusting. Oh, it got worse. <laughs> and I think that'd be the one with the glasses on because like the only one I could look at without actually feeling violent. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Is he proud of him? <laughs> does he does he like him? Yeah. <laughs> he he I likes think him, but so. he's in pain. <laughs> because his are legs. He's got worms for legs, not worms in his legs. Yeah, that's more palatable, I guess. He actually looks like an oddballs character. We have we have a, a character who's basically <laughs> Basically, a a worm living inside the back of a ventriloquist dummy. I don't know if you, you ever always know. have worms, Carl. You always have these stories with the worms. Yeah, you got to keep your fears at bay. <laughs> I don't remember. I I don't know if that's me, honestly. If I if I I can't take. I, we were making a bunch of characters. I don't I don't remember if I said, "Hey, let's have a parasitic worm uh, controlling a fake boy," but I. I probably did. Like, I, it's probably it's probably my, my note. <laughs> yeah. My hypothesis is that my legs are worms. Let's hear <laughs> from the experiment. This is perfect. <laughs> you sound just like me. This is perfect. I've, I've concluded that we're worms. <laughs> oh the God. experiment is done. <laughs> legs are worms. Confirmed. No, nah, it's very oh. stupid. Um... <laughs> I, that's so funny. Well, you know what? Um, you know what? Uh, since we're kind of getting close to like um, an hour and a half, now that we've kind of like stared at these worms and uh, faced a little bit of creative block, tell us how that feels, that the creative block, and tell us um, how you deal with it when oh, you God. face it. Well, it's tough because... I used to just try to, jeez, mm. how do I not disappoint the listeners? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to like really obsess about my job, obsessed with animation. And it was sort of like, well, I'm a storyboard artist. I'm writing. Uh, this is what I've lived for. This is why I'm here. And, I, and you know, I think moving out to California just to do that got kind of obsessive too, where it's like, you can always make a storyboard better. So. Uh, I'd be working on the weekends, working at night. Um, so to deal with a block then was more like, let's just power through. And even if it meant sitting there all day and thumbnailing or throwing them out or just like hitting myself in the head over and over again, like about the idea. And then eventually it comes to you. And I think there is something to like, the whole like, oh, pressure makes diamonds, you know, especially if there's a production schedule and you have a certain day to pitch by. But mm. I think nowadays I'm, I'm trying to like step back from it a bit and not let it be my entire life. You know, I'm trying to find space to do other things. Uh, so like if I get more of a creative block, it's sort of like, well, that's okay. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna take up hiking or do something else. Like 
I know it's not like the, <laughs> the best answer to how to deal with creative block, but I think I was realizing my creative block comes from burnout. Yeah. And it's, uh, so I'm trying to like, to, ah, I'm just trying to do things better, you know? And I think one time, I will say the worst creative block I ever had was, uh, God, the, yeah, I hate this. It was like, I was actually on an overall deal for a year at a studio. And you think it's, oh, well, that's great because they're just going to pay you to be there. But um, all those executives left the company during that. So everybody in charge of the group we were in with our overall deals wasn't there. So we had no work to do. So every day it was like, well, you can do whatever you want. And like, for me, I really work well with parameters. And if it's yeah. like, just do what you want to do. It's like, there was one point where I was like, I can't draw. Like I, I've sat here for a month and I don't know if I can draw. Can I do a storyboard again? Did I forget? Like it actually hit that hard wow. where it was like this like fear of what am I doing? I can't do this. And uh, I remember I had to ease back in by making fun of people. Like it was like, <laughs> weird. It, was like it was like going back. Yeah. It was like going back to school again. I'm like, okay, today I'm just going to draw him and make fun of him you know, or draw the uh, guy at work that we were teasing each other and we just draw each other and draw caricatures of each other. And then I was like, oh yeah, no, I can do that. I can do this. And it was just, it was the most bizarre state I think I've ever been in where it's like, I think everything was like, so go, 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 go with like, you know, when I was on pig opening at cricket, I was doing bug salad at night. I was up to like two in the morning every night on bug salad. Like I was just like wow. burning out, burning out, burning out. And then they're like, okay, great. Uh, Oh, we don't want to lose you, so we're going to keep you here. But then everything, all the people in that department left. So there was nothing to do. So it was like, oh, go, 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 then stop. And yeah, it was like this weird mind game that happened. And yeah, I never want to go back to that place. So for me, that creative block, I had to slowly get back to my roots, which was what I did in class, was like drawing my classmates yeah. <laughs> and making fun of people. But um yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I had a friend that the same thing happened to, too. Like, you know, not to name names, but they were on the same same, uh, the same type of a place at a studio, same type of a, a deal. And they had, uh, with no direction, they just were like, I can't. They were like, they, were they started taking like these Zoom classes for like, I'm going to draw figure drawing models, all this stuff, because they're just like, I just feel like I need to do something. And they were like <laughs> going stir crazy. So... Yeah, I don't I, know. I agree. I feel like especially because when you when you kind of like move up the ranks in this industry, you're so used to all the schedules and all the like deadlines all the time. And then if someone's just like, oh, just do whatever you want, then it's like the biggest like blank page to have like the biggest yeah. like writer block ever because you're just like, Ugh. uh yeah, I know it's very relatable. Um and yeah. And yeah. <laughs> I think at the time too, it's like I put so much energy into bug cell and I was like well I could pitch my own idea but then it's like I know how much I can lose myself in that process mm -hmm. you know and like do I really want to go back into that, my own personal development hell right now or do I want to yeah I don't know. there's like a, there's a huge difference when when for me anyway it's like if someone's like hey can you help figure out this project can you do this can you like like what's not working and I come in and or I, or I work on something on the ground from the ground up and help establish a show like that to me I can just dive right in but if someone's like hey why don't you come up with a show and do whatever you want it's that's harder to get into so it's sort of like yeah yeah that's why I think that's honestly I worked on bug salad for a year before I ever pitched it originally and then it went to develop and then when it got the short went to development and then by the time it I think it went on YouTube in 2018 and I started it and like I think the, my shirt first short was finished in 2013 so it was like it was a it was a pretty long process wow yeah, yeah so it's like you don't know if you're losing yourself to that process again <laughs> yeah 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 no yeah 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 so what'd you do what'd you do now like for hobbies you talked about hiking is like what are you, what are the things that you're doing now to kind of help yourself from falling in that i'm trying to like learn new things like i'm, I'm trying to read a bunch um which is like 
I realized, God, I have like like read a book since like what middle school, you know? Dude, I kind of went through that like, recently too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was weird too, because like, oh my gosh, reading so hard. And then like after like half the book, like, wow, I can read fast again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> favorite but, books, uh, favorite yeah. recent reads. Um, or... no, I don't. Oh, you're being I mean, tested. Trying... You just got tested. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah, I don't have anything. I'm trying to. Uh, God, I'm trying to like read about backpacking, just like going out hiking and sleeping over for the night. I'm oh. been too much of a wimp to pull the trigger and do it, but I want to. I want to learn everything I can before I do it. I like that you called it sleeping over for the night. That's very. It's very child, yeah. a childlike way of viewing camping. It's like I'm <laughs> gonna sleep over at my friend's house. <laughs> yeah, it's a sleepover with Mother Nature. That's the only. Yeah. That's the difference between oh, backpacking like and hiking. <laughs> but yeah, I'm also equally afraid of aliens so that might not go well either <laughs> i love that you're you you because i was thinking like i mean nature maybe worms but no nature aliens that's yeah it's like, yeah are those yeah, your those two? fears or do you have other ones <laughs> it's those two it's like <laughs> if you combine them sc screw my life like I'm, I'm done you know i don't know what something clicked when i was a kid I think it was like Fox News or something. It was like, hey, look at this alien autopsy at six o'clock tonight. And they show like an image or they're talking about alien reports. I remember there's there's one news company talking about aliens when I was growing up and it just scared the crap out of me. So if aliens flew around in a big old tree, you just, you would faint? Like, you know, like it's nature plus aliens? Oh no, I'm not afraid of nature. I'm just afraid of just the worms in nature. Yeah. Oh. So it's like it, it's, if it's like through the windows of the UFO, you would see they're actually giant worms. That's okay. The then you're like, yeah. So if I got no, if I you. got an alien worm, I would jump off a cliff. <laughs> so you don't like Dune. You don't like like you don't like those big old worms in that in that uh. I in Dune. I didn't huh? mind. I didn't mind them because they're so big. But if oh, it's like. Yeah. If it's something you, small, you're and just quick. watching the movie, just like ah, those are worms. Do you do you remember that? Do you remember that movie Dreamcatcher? Yes. And there's like what do they call it? A shit weasel. Ah, uh, I forgot. And they go the to the bathroom and a giant worm thing comes out, right, and then runs away and tells the other aliens where you are, or something like that. Do you remember that? It's a big old snitch. Yeah. Terrifying. I haven't seen that movie. That the. I think it's crazy because I think I have seen a movie called Dreamcatcher, but it was the kind of movie that uh, a teacher would put on in health class to teach you about the benefits of never doing drugs or oh, something. No. And so I don't think I have seen the specific Dreamcatcher you're talking about. No, this one's great. It starts off, a bunch of guys go into a cabin in the woods. It's snowy, you know, real great movie. I didn't even know what it was about. I just it was like, well, it was like streaming or whatever at the time. Oh, so it's, that, it's it that movie where the giant worm is a joint and they're like, we don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> Which one? What's that? <laughs> I feel like we've all seen a movie called Dreamcatcher, but it's not. None of them are the same movie. <laughs> Maybe I'm the wrong. Okay. Morgan Freeman's in it. Morgan Freeman's in a helicopter. It turns out the one that you saw was the one. That she yeah. saw in, in health class. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like like like. Oh no, the worm is a giant blunt. We don't want anything to do with that. That's weed. It's gonna eat us. That's right. Yeah, that is. Yeah, no, Dreamcatcher. When I saw yeah. Morgan Freeman's in a helicopter, he's a bad guy. Friends are in a cabin. Bears and animals run through the woods because they're scared of something coming, and then yeah, aliens show up. But they show up first by coming out of a guy who's sick in the toilet. <gasps> no yeah, thanks. that's scary. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, you had to go through that, dude. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> wow. Well, well um, I, we have a question from one of her patrons. And I, you, um, let us know how you want to answer the question. I no, her. thanks. No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, from our patron Joe Benson, do you know any other characters who were close to being used for the new Animaniac show, but last minute got cut? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because like early on, I didn't even think backwards Gary was going to make it into the show, but I just did like an animatic of this guy with his face stuck on the back of his head for uh, the for the writers. We were in the writers room just spitballing ideas. I just wanted to make him laugh. And then we eventually got sent to Spielberg. <laughs> oh, and it was like, it was just a guy. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. It was like, I played this really corny song 
and like to set up like this really long intro like you're gonna watch a show this didn't end up in animaniacs at all but like just the character did but like you set up this uh it's really long obnoxious info you like walking around looking at fountains like doing things around town there's like the like the the train going by in chicago and then you know it says something like but backwards gary goes to the bank is the episode and then he's in line for the bank and an old woman comes in line behind him and like taps him on the, it says something like asks if she can go in front of him. he just starts instead of talking he just screams ridiculousness out of the back of his head and then it just says uh executive producer steven spielberg and the music kicks back in <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't supposed to be a real thing but uh they ended up keeping the character which was funny that's dope so, so yeah that's very funny yeah i don't know why i brought that up but no no um, i like that that's the kind, <laughs> do of, what you the will. kind of little gems that we're that we're mining for we're little miners trying to get little little ju- jewels of Nuggets. wisdom from you yeah. guys Diamonds yeah. that were created under pressure a long time ago. We're just mining yeah. now. <laughs> there you go. Do you see on page four? I, I drew you as a diamond. Okay, hang on. It's pretty good. I just want. <laughs> I love that there's a little oh, coal nice. guy. It's like the new you. The new you is the little coal in the hammock. That's like I'd rather stay coal. Yeah, that's great. It's so amazing. I'm like I'm really upset that I don't have a Cintiq right now. I could have joined in on this. I like the idea of just every once in a while, just like completely interrupting the podcast and going, look at my drawing. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, especially for the just the people who are only listening. Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. But hey, that's incentive for them to like, uh, hey, come check us out on YouTube. You know, you might find some uh, little gems or might I say diamonds. You never know. (laughs) Are you, should we wrap this up? I think we, we, that was really fun. Um, I think we could say that the end of this creative block. Uh, Carl, thank you so much for being our guest. And thanks to our listeners. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Uh, th- is this part of new- is there a new script here? Or are we just saying no. thank you, everybody? Thank you, Carl. It's yeah. on the it's on if you scroll down on the chat. I love that we're y'all 2023. We're just kind of we're just uh just uh, being a little jesters. loosey goosey. Yeah. <laughs> Carl Ferrolo. Carl Ferrolo. That's right. I'm practicing it. it. It's my new skill. Um, it's that's my new hobby, pronouncing the name right. Follow us on Twitter. It's at Creative Block Creative without the vowels. Our also Instagram, which is our new platform where we kind of announce stuff now. It's at Creative uh, uh, CRTV dot block, where we ask for drawing prompts and questions to ask our guests. Huge thanks to our editor Clements for editing the podcast and Malik for helping us produce the show. Are, are you saying all that to me? Uh, yeah, Carl, you have to, uh, <laughs> subscribe to our podcast. Um, it's all and... on you. Please be a patron, Carl. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we'll, we won't last much longer if you, if you, Carl, don't become a patron right now. Yeah, Carl, you have to help us pay for editor Clements and our producer Malik and for Zoom and Drive. It's all on your shoulders, Carl. Right. Um, but hey, you can get early access to interviews as well as bonus episodes. Doesn't that sound so nice, Carl? Yeah. And if you do it, we'll shout you out in the episode. This episode goes out to Carl Frollo. <laughs> this would be great. That'd be great. Click the link in the description of this episode. I've been your host, V. And I'm your co-host, Sean, a.k.a. Lord Spew. Thanks for watching, guys. Keep being creative. We'll see you next week. I'll see you next week, too. Maybe. Bye. Bye.